What is going on, everybody? It's KB. Before the episode starts, make sure you go check out Streamer Season's brand new theme music. That's right. We have full-time brand new theme music thanks to the newest homie and newest member of the music side of uh, Underground Sports Philadelphia homies. That is Mobley Stay Volk. His new single is out now. It is linked in the description on YouTube, and you'll be hearing it on audio until we can figure out if we can play it on video on streamer season episodes from here on out that's our new theme music stay vault go download it now wherever you get your music and go check out the music video on youtube but now let's get into the episode of streamer season philadelphia baby you're gonna love it best sports fans in the world actually the worst but that's what makes them the best because we're in the corner watching you <laughs> kiss her. Why, uh -oh. <laughs> What is going on, fellow streamers? Welcome into a very special edition of Streamer Season. It is episode 100. 100 episodes of your favorite streaming platform, TV and movie podcast, on the Underground Sports Philadelphia Podcast Network. And I would say more than 50% of them, I would guess, are yours truly, KB, and my co-host, Dylan Mazzola. Yeah, dude, it's a pleasure. It's crazy to think we've gotten that far, man. Dude, it's like, you look back, like, obviously Underground is coming up on a five-year anniversary in February, which is crazy in and of itself. And you and I are two OGs of Underground, you know, from the beginning. And then we start a spinoff podcast talking about soccer. Goes away for four years. Now it's back. Shout out Top Bins. We start a spinoff podcast talking about lacrosse. It's one of our most successful endeavors ever. And then the world shuts down and there's no sports. And just an idea at my day job, texting you and a couple other of our people being like, hey, what if we took TV and movies and made it into book club, but for streaming platform stuff? Everybody talks about the big screen stuff. Let's do it for the streaming platforms. Nobody's doing it. And then the world shuts down, and that's all we have. And now we're here, 100 episodes in, talking about nerd shit, talking about shows and movies on your favorite streaming platforms, the business side of things. Uh, we've we've talked to uh, an executive producer on a big Disney Plus show. Uh, we do have an interview uh, in the works coming up very, very soon. Um can't give too many details, but I will be able to give Dylan details once we stop recording. Um, <laughs> but another big, no, okay. no, <laughs> another big interview on the horizon, I would say late 2022, early 2023 um, is my guess for where the project is at and then just the availability of said person. But it is 90% confirmed at least going to be happening. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Dylan and I have big plans for the future. But before we even dive into, you know, all the, the, the business side of stuff, 100 episodes is a milestone that I kind of uh, assimilate to, like, you've put in the work on your podcast. A lot of podcasts fail. You know, the average podcast lasts about three episodes. And then they disappear. It's like an NFL running back. They last three years and then they're gone. They last three episodes. And a lot of people for, like don't realize how much work goes into a podcast. Um, but on our, our 100 episodes journey here, Dylan, what, uh, what are some moments that uh, stick out to you on our uh, TV and movie journey? That Who would have thunk we'd be talking about TV and movies when we started a sports podcast? That's Honestly, that's the biggest takeaway in itself. Like, we started underground for sports primarily, you know, that was your brainchild. Um, and then like, we kind of just eventually <laughs> ended up talking about other things. I mean, I think even way back, I randomly appeared on like an episode of top Ends, which was funny because I don't even know, know soccer. So it, it just like, it goes as a saying, like it branched out so far since we started as a whole. And it's awesome. Cause no, I would not think we're sitting here a hundred episodes deep. Uh, started this show based off the Mandalorian, essentially. Shout out Pedro Pascal. You got this thing rolling. Um, 
I wouldn't think, you know, it's, I wouldn't think we're here, but it's, I'm glad to be here. Um, it's just, it's crazy. And the like, biggest takeaways besides not talking about sports um, is uh, just honestly, it's ironic because like I, I mentioned them already, but like, it's crazy to think that like a new era of Star Wars is essentially what propelled this going forward. And we've covered quite a few nerdy things along the way, but I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Pedro, John Favreau and company uh, for making that like project that became the uh, backbone of this show because we've covered all the seasons and we've covered like the spinoffs. We've covered the book of Mandalorian as uh, we called it. So, you know, (laughs) very much. I went, I went on a whole clone wars journey because of this podcast. Um, You know, and I think the coolest part, I think I speak for you on this too. Like, it's given us more purpose to sit down and watch TV and movies that, like, ever since we started this show, it, like, reinvigorated my, like, want and love of watching shows and movies. Because before, I'd be stuck in the same old tropes. Like, I'd watch my my typical Survivor, which I still do, and we talk about that on the main pod because Matt and I are Survivor nerds. But, you know, I'd watch Survivor, and I'd watch sports. That was really it. And then you get these streaming platforms coming out. And you have a you know a few shows on Netflix that come out, but then once you binge through them, they're done, and you got to wait a couple years. Then Disney Plus rolls around, and then the Marvel shows come out, and it's like, okay, let's see what this is about. And then, you know, part of this 100 episode journey, Dylan and I for two straight shows uh, back in you know winter and early spring 2021 are up at 3 a.m. Eastern time, like texting each other like oh, shit, like, did you just see what happened? Yo, the episode just loaded on my Disney Plus, like, four minutes early. Let's go. Watching WandaVision and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And, like, being, like, up and awake during those moments, like, where, like, we were just getting out of, like, the clear of the year of 2020. Like, WandaVision started early 2021. And that, like, brought so many people together because we hadn't had Marvel content for so long. And, like, just being on the internet for those interactions, too. Like, being awake for the memes and the jokes and, like, all the stuff that pops up. Uh, And then, you know, it's propelled to us talking about Marvel shows, Star Wars shows. I watched my first Game of Thrones piece of content. Yeah, Um, and you liked it. (laughs) We've watched movies. I went back and watched Daredevil, which has become one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, We got to experience the return of Stranger Things. Like, even bigger and better than we would have had we not had this podcast. Um, And, you know, just, like, picking out, you know, new favorite characters from shows and movies, too, I think is a a really cool aspect of this show. And then, obviously, we talk about the Marvel movies because now they pertain to the shows. So now when we go to the movie theater, it's like, all right, now we have an outlet to talk about what we just saw on the big screen and how it's going to tie back to what we're going to see on our television screens in two months when a new show comes out. Yeah, it's all it's it's all full it's all full circle. Like some projects within like Marvel, obviously they like literally connect to itself, and everything like how we were saying Star Wars birth other Star Wars projects, and even um like when we watched the uh, the Great Man that was directed by like through us brothers, right? I believe. Yep. Which we're yeah. going to talk about them later on in the show. <laughs> Exactly. So my point is, like, we've done all these things. We've taken like current events. We've taken like now we're starting to people are listening to my rant every every week of giving us recommendations, which you guys are starting to do in full force. So it's like it's great, you know. We it's went full circle. We've reached out. We're learning. We're taking our community and providing like what you guys want as well. And it's just cool to have the show because it adds like a different outlet. Like you know, when you mindlessly watch TV, you mindlessly watch TV, but like. The shows and movies we cover on this, I have to at least have in the back of my brain. Like I' gonna have to talk about this later, so I have to kind of provide my thought on certain things and my opinions, which is good. It's great to have a podcast for that because I can tell you guys, like, yo, I love this or I did not like it, and <laughs> I've done both. <laughs> yeah, now like it's it's leading to us like game planning for next summer to go to New York Comic Con. Um, you know, we have a lot of, of tricks up our sleeves that we want to, mm-hmm. you know, pull off for this show in particular. Um, cause obviously we have the successes that we have with our main pod with OTB. Uh, so some of the, the shows that are, you know, later on in incarnation, we have big plans for, 
uh, and New York Comic Con is is at the top of our list, I would say, for 2023. So look out, New York Comic Con. We're coming for you. Um, so without any further ado, first of all, thank you guys for uh, 100 episodes. Yeah. We wouldn't be here without people tuning in and listening. Um, so big thank you to you guys. And who would have thunk, dude? First thing we ever did for this show was put out a Super Bowl commercial uh, during <laughs> the Chiefs and 49ers halftime was when we announced to the world, hey, we're, we're starting a TV and movie podcast. Uh, what perfect timing. That's still our pin tweet to this day, too. I'm very proud of Once that. Once again, full circle. The streaming service, our streaming service podcast, essentially, is aired for like a sports, like a sports day, like a sports commercial. Our main pod is sports. We started with Star Wars. Our 100th episode, <laughs> if you're watching live, or well, not, you know, I mean, when you watch the video, uh, we're covering Andor today. You'll see the thing. So it's like, hello, it's full circle. It's Star Wars. Pretty Star Wars. wild. 100 yeah. episodes in Star Wars. And for <clears throat> full circle effect, I'll even say the thing I always say. I'll say it right now. I'm crazy. Kyle, 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 what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Dylan, I think you're going to say. Before I say that, it is wild that this show started with uh, a peak panorama recommendation from Dom to watch Hunters on Amazon Prime, and that's the first thing we we covered. Uh, and then this iteration of the show later on in 2020, with like you said, with The Mandalorian, which a couple months, Dylan, we got a release date for that. We're going to talk about that later on in the show. We'll have season three of Mandalorian coming up on this show. Yeah. Um, but make sure you guys are following us on the socials. At streamer SZN on Twitter, Instagram. Follow Dylan on Twitter at Dylan Mazzola. Follow me at KBIZZL311. Follow the network. We hit 3K, Dylan, on the Underground Sports Twitter. We hit 3K before Elon takes it away. Um, but we're doing a big time giveaway right now on the Twitter at Underground PHI, giving away a Joel, Kobe, and Bede jersey, the number 24 jersey he wore. Uh, back right after Kobe passed away, an autographed Dolph Shays photo, and your choice of Dewani Art. You all know the GOAT that she is. Your choice. Uh, so go check that out, and uh, all you gotta do is retweet, follow Underground, follow our boy Josh Reynolds on Twitter, and then for a bonus entry, subscribe to Josh's podcast, That's Ball, folks, and our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. And you get an extra entry. Uh, but Dylan, what should they be doing on our podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, leaving those five-star ratings and reviews, and on Apple Podcasts, what should they be doing? Well, while you're doing what Kyle said, both for the giveaway and what he just said, you should be leaving us recommendations on shows and movies to watch next. Don't feel shy. You can leave it on a comment. In YouTube, you can leave it on a comment on Apple. You could find a way to comment on a, on Spotify. I don't care. <laughs> just, just leave those recommendations within the reviews themselves. Let us know what you want us to watch. Uh, we have every streaming service, like literally between the two of us. We got them all. We're like the Thanos of uh, this, John. So just let us know. We will try to watch it. And we will let you know, too. Like, I'll let you know. I'll, your prized possession, your recommendation. I'll look you in the eyes and tell you, job well done, or it stunk. Either yeah. way, I'll let you know. Uh, so subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Leave those five-star reviews. Subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. Uh, smash that like button. Ring the bell icon. Comment down below with your show and movie recommendations or your thoughts on all the topics we're talking about on today's show. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And of course, Dylan, what would an episode of an underground sports Philadelphia podcast be if it wasn't for our merch partners, PHI apparel company. That's right. Every single episode, we got to mention our merch partners because streamer season is brought to you by PHI apparel company. They provide unique designs and high quality clothing. For the great fans of Philadelphia and TV and movies, because streamer season exclusive merch will be coming to the storefront very, very soon. Uh, with their original designs for all, there's no doubt you'll stand out in the crowd or the movie theater or at home or wherever. 
Uh, you guys can use promo code UNDERGROUND for 10% off any apparel when you shop online at phiapparel.co. That's phiapparel.co and use code UNDERGROUND for 10% off your order. Dylan, let's get into episode 9 of Andor titled Nobody's Listening. Uh, Toby Haynes and Bo Willimon on this episode once again. They were on last week's episode as well, and they will also be on episode 10 before Benjamin Caron and Tony Gilroy retake over the reins for the penultimate episode and the finale. Uh, but the synopsis on this one, pretty short and sweet. Uh, under the unblinking scrutiny of the Empire within a high-security prison, Cassian must... Uh, surreptitiously is the description here uh work to plan his escape the imperial security bureau the ibs if you will uh keeps digging for answers on ferrix and dylan and i were talking before we started recording this episode as well kind of felt you know for lack of a better term, lackluster on this episode. It was more Squid Game vibes that we got from it just because of, like, the perfection of that uh, that prison facility, um, you know, trying to plan an escape. There's a lot of, you know, just commiserating amongst the prisoners there, yeah. trying to convince the big dog in the prison yard, Andy Serkis's character, like, hey, we got to stick together, brother. Stop trying to be a fool. We got to stick together. So not that it was a bad episode, it just felt like kind of a filler to get us to where we're going potentially for episodes 10, 11, and 12, which will lead to Cassian more than likely, in our opinion, escaping this prison facility, getting out, and then where does that then take us going into season two, which then leads into where Andor starts off. Yeah. I definitely think he's going to... Ex- I'm sorry, Rogue One, not Andor. That's yeah. the show. I definitely think he's going to escape. Uh, he might even escape sooner than the finale, just because I'm not sure how like closely they want to play the timelines to the vest sort of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, just because the longer he's in jail, I mean, that kind of takes away his plot. Like, n- not a bad way. I'm just saying, like, he's stuck in jail. The only, the only thing he can do is work his shift and have a a state you know a coup uh which is very if you you haven't watched uh please pause and come back later but okay now i'll go so if you watched the episode obviously you know at the very end the dynamic shifts and they're very much well most of the guys are probably on the side but the lead dog as kyle said Andy circus definitely has shifted his opinion on his stay at the lovely prison um, so I'm assuming we're going to see the prison revolt, riot, escape. I would say as soon as maybe like the end of next week, leading into two episodes from now kind of thing. Just because there's not much preparation they can do. It's not like a typical OG Alcatraz movie. They're not going to dig through the cell wall or or get like a knife and a cake or something. You know, like they're going to their their only way of escaping is that elevator that comes down when they're on the work floor. So they're going to have to, I think he was talking about it. Andor was talking to the other inmate, um, talking about how they might have to like rush the guard. And I'm not sure how they'll all get out either. So who knows? <laughs> yeah. It's going to be interesting to just see how he escapes. And I think that's what everybody's just kind of waiting for now yeah. is like that escape plan and like, what's going to be uh part of that and how it's executed. Um, but I think that's where, in a similar vein to She-Hulk, where we got teased with um, Daredevil in episode five, I think it was, and then we had to wait two weeks before Daredevil actually showed up. Three weeks, actually, because, you know, it took uh, it took two weeks of just extra episodes to, to put into the season, which was fine. But I think that's where everybody's mindset is now, is like, okay, when does he get out of the prison? What's going to happen after that occurs? Um, you know, a lot of... The past couple weeks, too, it's been a lot of jumping around to different plot points, too, between the IBS, between Cassian, between Mon Mothma, between, like, the higher-ups on Coruscant. not done as gracefully, again, as last like last week. Like, that was one of my complaints. I think you agree with me. Felt a little shaky in terms of, like, the jumping, because it's just, like, I don't know. 
the way the way it, it didn't flow i guess it wasn't a super even keel like it wasn't terrible like it wasn't like you didn't get the sense that it was like rewritten but it didn't flow i guess with how, with how they decided to jump around in my personal opinion yeah so like we said it wasn't terrible it was just kind of like what we would describe for lack of a better term as a filler episode well yeah because we literally discovered we discovered we discussed literally everything that happened the only thing we left out in the prison sequence is that a poor old man died but in reality it is it's probably better than living a life of doing the same thing because he was clearly going like he's, he's getting old so you couldn't do it anymore it sucks typical like prison movie like trope like he was close to getting out and didn't make it is what it is unfortunately and then the ibs thing the blonde lady i forget her name already she's she's mean <laughs> we know that she's very driven and then the security guard guy is a simp we have our first simp in star wars okay people like first creeper alert i don't know i don't know if he was simping over her per se or more so her goal or a combination of both couldn't tell the scene made me kind of uneasy <laughs> like watching him like i've been watching you at work our goals align <laughs> She was like, okay, <laughs> this is weird now. But anywho. <laughs> you can leave. I literally gave you a better job, bro. <laughs> Go yeah. away. Uh, so, Dylan, with that being said, and or episode nine, what grade is it grabbing from you, big dog? Uh, might be even lower than last week. Not, I might get it like low, low, but I'm going to say like seven out of ten. It just... To have two episodes in a row where I feel like pacing wasn't the greatest, it was sloppy in terms of hopping around, in terms of action, there was none, if you're an action fan. Plot was important, but nothing like really detrimental, just the idea of an escape, the IBS is planning fake pilot deaths <laughs> now, and um, that's really it. Oh, and the Senator scene, like she got basically laughed at in Senate, but that makes sense because she's a senator in a fake government that is very like Republican, conservative, however they view that in Star Wars. Um, and she's very much a bleeding heart, which is fine. No, no wrong to either side, you know. Um, but obviously, <laughs> if most of the government's pro empire, she's not going to have a good time. So, what uh, was your score again? I'm sorry. What's up? What was your score number again? Uh, seven. Yeah, I'm gonna give this seven point five. It was fine. It was it was good. You know, it, it's it's important to the plot. We assume from what we've seen so far, it's we gonna be important so. to you know what's what's to come. Um, so I'm gonna give it a seven point five. Dylan gives it a seven flat. Ladies and gentlemen at home, for the quick math there, that's fourteen point five divided by two rounds up to a seven point three from seven point two five. Which the average rating on uh, Rotten Tomatoes now it is a hundred percent certified fresh on eight ratings, but the average rating is a seven point four out of ten. So we're so right we're in both, line. We're both right there. <laughs> so that is uh, our review on the most recent episode of Andor, episode nine, titled "Nobody's Listening," uh, which brings us to Marvel trailers. We uh, we touched on i want to say last week the quantum mania trailer a little bit if not at I all i think we talked about that and then we talked about maybe the black panther trailer i'm not sure i know we talked about the guardians uh holiday special trailer yes. um but ant-man and the wasp quantum mania trailers here uh when does that come out february okay I knew, I knew it was like not far away i just yeah. didn't know like how close so quantum mania so Black Panther Wakanda Forever comes out next week, November 11th, which Dylan and I will have our review on uh, once we both see the movie. Um, so stay tuned for that. That will end Phase 4 of the MCU. Quantumania starts Phase 5. Um, so I don't know exactly where the Guardians holiday special falls in. Is that Phase 4 and a half? Um, well, yeah, because there's no... there's. I don't want to say legit. I'm not knocking. There's no, like, canon, canon, like... Um, thing in between the movies right like there's no new show drop no it's just like a special so i want to say guardians might be phase four and then phase five starts with and Quantum is the holiday special canon or is it just yeah it's it's canon like werewolf by night is canon okay um so we got the quantum mania trailer which there's a lot of interesting things that dylan and i just wanted to discuss on the pod for you guys from that trailer um i think my biggest takeaway there's two um, 
that are similar to some movies we saw in Phase 4 and might be some tie-ins. The first one, Dylan, is when we see Kang the Conqueror uh, on his ship. And you see those rings kind of rotating around him a lot. A lot of people uh, are piecing together that there might be some sort of connection uh, for Kang the Conqueror with the Ten Rings from Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, for multiple reasons. Reason number one, we remember the post credit scene of Shang-Chi. There's the beacon that's being sent out from those rings that nobody's seen before. Nobody knows what it is, what kind of technology the rings are. So it's a, a foreign type thing, which could be coming from, uh, you know, Quantumania or Chronopolis, whatever they decide to call it in the movie, uh, for Ant-Man, for, <sighs> for Kang. The other big link here with those rings looking eerily similar is that... Um, Shang-Chi, and I want to get his name correct, not the actor, but the director of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Um, what a good movie, by the way. If you fantastic seen that movie. By now, definitely. Uh, Destin Daniel Cretton. He's the director of uh, Shang-Chi. He is directing Avengers Kang Dynasty. Ooh. So I think there's a lot to piece together there. That, you know, he's going to be working with this Kang character in a big capacity when his first, uh, his first dip into the MCU full-fledged was with Shang-Chi. The other takeaway I had was when we saw the giant Ant-Man running around a bunch of the other Ant-Men. And then the giant Ant-Man starts to unravel spaghetti style like we saw Mr. Fantastic do in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Spaghetti. Earth 838. <laughs> Reed Richards. Uh, we all know Nathaniel Richards is a Kang variant. Um, I think that there's going to be some sort of connection simply because he's an insect. Um, that there's wow, a bunch of Ant-Men. say that. There's a bunch of Ant-Man there, and it's very similar to Spider-Man, where there's a multitude of Spider-Man um, variants and everything, like we saw in Spider-Man No Way Home, and they're all connected through the web of life, through their spidey senses. Ant-Man, there's probably a shit ton of Ant-Man out there who probably all look like Paul Rudd. It's not like a Spider-Man situation. We could be wrong with that, too, but that's my assumption from what we've seen from the trailer. Um... And those are all Ant Man variants. I hope they just get a bunch of uh, just th like a bunch of just random like famous actors, but that are kind of like like uh, Paul Rudd like esque. Like just get like Ryan Reynolds, like Chris Pine, <laughs> like just like the the stereotypical like like. <laughs> that'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. No, but I do agree. I think they all. I think they all pilot. I think they're Ant Man variant because also from the trailer clip that we saw that got leaked from D twenty three or Comic Con, where Kang says, "Oh, you're an Avenger. Haven't I killed you before? How would he know who that is?" And then well, he knows the Ant Man's might, name. The costume could be similar though. Right, and then he knows Ant Man's name in this trailer. So there's got to be some sort of link there to you know some sort of multiverse situation obviously because this is the multiverse saga that we are on the horizon of uh but dylan what were your takeaways from the ant-man trailer um and what are your kind of early on expectations marvel is just forcing us to not forget ant-man <laughs> remember that's our theory because we just randomly like random references to scott lang and company uh I'm, jokes aside i am excited uh, i've enjoyed the ant-man films more than the average marvel fan has i guess um it's one of the properties i do enjoy um i don't as what to expect i, I think he might die in the movie I, I don't know how many more movies paul Rudd wants to do it's getting it's getting a little foggy because the def the definite trend I mean, well thunderbolts was confirmed but there's quite a few of like younger actors slash heroes both coincide being casted, which hints at like a younger Avengers and not hints at it's pretty much all but confirmed. Um, and it begs the question like what OG vet heroes are going to like live to see through the new dawn, and like not for nothing but like Kang's a menace, so someone's dying in the film of importance. And unless they put other heroes in, like besides like the Wasp and Ant-Man, um, 
I wouldn't be surprised if this is Paul Rudd's like final thing. I'd have to do research. I'm not sure if he signed on for any more projects or how long his contract is, but it wouldn't be surprising. And I, I know I always say this, but like to make a good villain stick, especially if he's the big bad of the next phase, like. We've seen it before. The big bad has to kill or presumably kill a main character off to kind of solidify themselves as like, I'm the captain now. I think Ant-Man's going to stick around a little bit longer simply because of one fact that you and I have talked about since WandaVision. Uh, He's part of the West Coast Avengers. That's true. And it seems like they're assembling that in a way. Um in the MCU with the introduction of Shang-Chi being in San Francisco, White Vision being uh, in the West Coast Avengers in the comics, and he's now in the MCU, and we'll get into, uh, I don't know if you saw that news, there is a series coming out with White Vision. Um, We'll talk about that later on as well. But I think Ant-Man's going to be part of that lineup for some sort of time, um, while we get Cassie Lang, newly casted uh, version of her, um, in the Young Avengers as stature, uh, now, which is all but confirmed. That's true. Now, remember, a little, not to be an ass, but I was being an ass, I'll say, <laughs> to be that guy, I did say Ant-Man, Scott Lang, is killed. But if there's different versions of him, <laughs> just saying. So, mm-hmm. so, yes, I think we'll both be right. Maybe our Scott is not killed, but I do think we'll see several Scots be killed to prove to the point of Kang being a conqueror. Uh, last bit on Ant-Man 2, uh, or I should say Ant-Man 3. Um, ah, I see what you did there. A lot of people, because it does seem like it's going to be a heist movie again, like Ant-Man traditionally has been, uh, Kang goes on to say that you know he's had something stolen from him and he needs Ant-Man to go get it back. The big rumor on the interwebs is, uh, well, not rumor, but the big theory on the internet is, uh, the thing that was stolen from Kang is Miss Minutes from Loki, who is confirmed. Tara Strong is coming back for Loki Season 2, so we will see Miss Minutes once again. I think the biggest question that leads to a lot of people thinking that is, we have no idea what the fuck Miss Minutes truly is. We know she's, you know, this character, but we don't know if she's AI, we don't know if she's a variant, we don't know if she's some sort of, you know... Uh, living embodiment of like a a Jarvis or a a Friday type thing that was for Iron Man. We have no idea what Miss Minutes truly is. Um, So I wanted to get your thoughts on that. You know, could it be that Miss Minutes was stolen, uh, you know, from Kang and he needs Miss Minutes to, you know, kind of uh, complete his destiny. Who who, who better to steal Kang? Who better to steal her from Kang than Kang? And a lot of people are saying it could have been it could have been he who remains, or it could have been Janet Van Dyne while she was in the quantum realm. That's a good point. I'm I'm not really sure. I mean, I kind of like that theory because it has to be something of super significance. Uh, but also, has something like kind of hard for him to obtain or get back himself because he's a very capable man. So it makes you think like what was stolen that he doesn't want to get himself, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. And I think, like, obviously, this is just the beginning of what we're gonna get from Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror. So you know, we're gonna learn even more and more about this character and what he's gonna bring to the table in the MCU. I say it every time we bring him up, but like, that man's a menace to society, and he's gonna destroy everything. Yeah, it's gonna be a wild ride to say the least. Um, Dylan, we do have Wakanda forever, black Panther, Wakanda forever coming out in theaters next Friday, November 11th. Uh, one of the more highly anticipated films of the year, obviously just to see how, you know, this movie is portrayed, obviously Chadwick Boseman tragically passing away, uh, a few years ago through a big wrench in a lot of people's, expectations for this movie a lot of people's thoughts on this movie but from everything we've seen this movie looks like it's going to be one of the more beautiful tributes to somebody gone far too soon not only as uh their character in a movie but the actor themselves i think we're going to learn a lot from this movie across the board i think it is uh very intertwined with uh the theme of phase four which is the afterlife and, uh, you know, we saw that in, uh, you know, the likes of Moon Knight. We've seen it in Thor, Love, and Thunder. 
and I'm gonna I cheat think up the casting list as you're doing this. <laughs> Wakanda Forever, I I think is one of my more like it comes out next week. They can't hide. Very <laughs> true. I think it's one of my, my more highly anticipated movies of the year. Um, we're going to get, you know, Namor introduced or uh, as I've seen in a lot of uh, video breakdowns of people who have gotten to see the movie early, they're calling him Namor um, in the movie, which is interesting. Um, he is Marvel Comics first mutant, which yeah. is a, a big thing. Obviously, we've seen Miss Marvel get introduced as a mutant now in the MCU. Um I just think there's so much that's going to unravel and be taken away uh, by by fans and, and theorizers from this movie. And it just it has me super excited to just see where they put the bookend on Phase 4 and how this movie is going to kickstart Phase 5. I'm excited for it because I don't really know much about it because I really haven't, I purposely didn't watch the trailers. I try to not watch the trailers uh, and i know it's going to be a battle of like to compare it to someone who's not a marvel fan but it might be a dc fan this is basically basically going to be marvel's equivalent of like when the amazonians fight the atlanteans in dc uh which is pretty pretty close comparison because wakanda is a mystical realm it was hidden now it's not presumably if how it ended with shatala letting the world see it anyway my point is like it's you know water people versus people on land <laughs> the dumb it down you know what i mean and awesome. we did see yeah. new trailer footage they put out the first clip as well uh on the internet this week but we saw new trailer footage from the movie theater and everything that has been put out where there is water access in wakanda um for how namor gets there which is pretty interesting because looking at maps from the MCU, looking at where they've placed Wakanda in the continent of Africa, it's not really surrounded by much water at all. It's pretty landlocked. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see, like, how Namor actually got to Wakanda. Um, you know, Wakanda's going to get flooded. They're, you know, we're getting introduced to Ironheart in this movie as well. And there's going to be a lot of pieces and a lot of components from this movie to take away Uh that's going to be very interesting, I think, for the future. Will we have multiple Black Panthers in the MCU following this movie? Will it just be one? Uh, does Killmonger come back from the dead? Um, which is a, a big fan theory that we've discussed on this show and a lot of people have discussed. Um, it, it's going to be an, a fascinating movie, and I'm, I'm very excited for it. Me too. I'm excited to see how it all comes together, like the end of the phase and how they deal with real life events and tying it into marvel and see how the legend of black panther is passed on and handled in the film and, and so and so forth yeah so we will be talking about both of those at length on this show uh especially black panther in the coming weeks once dylan and i both get to the movie theater to see it uh we'll be talking about it and we'll let you know when we'll be talking about it so you can tune in um but i'm very excited for it and where it's going to lead the mcu uh forward and speaking of moving forward, DC Films is moving forward, Dylan. We mentioned this last week. James Gunn, obviously now you saw co, come in. co in charge of uh, DC Films on the creative side of things. Uh, there was news today that was uh, put out that Kevin Feige was offered a role to head DC Films before it was given to James Gunn. He respectfully declined. Um, so that's also very interesting, but... James Gunn now in charge of the creative side of things with DC Films. There's a lot to speculate with what could happen. Um, but I figured we'd just brainstorm on some things like that we would want to see James Gunn be in charge of to bring forward to DC to kind of get it out of this rut that it's been in for the last decade or so. Well, yeah. I was gonna say I think the rut may be coming to an end because you put and put these two great minds together, or at least very capable minds, even if you aren't sold in them. Let's be realistic. They're still the most stable thing we've had for the DC, right? And the other most stable thing DC's had to offer is Henry Cavell Cavill, how do you pronounce his name? Sorry, Henry, I love you. Come on the pod. Um, is him as Superman? Because let's be, let's let's face it. Besides the OG like seventy Superman, um, 
no other actor has like looked that much like a superhero besides Henry. He he literally looks like Superman. He's he got built for the role, and guess what? DC fumbled the bag, and Henry was ready to leave. But no, he's back now. He's back so much so that because of conflicting things, I'm not sure if it's entirely because of this, but he's literally leaving The Witcher, which is wild. They casted a Hemsworth. How dare they? No, uh, it was Liam. Who cares? Uh, no, I'm kidding. But he's literally that much back in Superman, which is great because he's still young enough to be around for another 10 years. Um, and Superman to me and to Kyle and to most like nerds, not exactly always our favorite. He's kind of a boring comic book character. But nonetheless, it's still a very important one to have right. So you have new heads of the organization. You got your literal poster boy, because that's what he is in DC. Poster boy. Back. That's squared away. The next step to regaining this, to taking to taking this ship and turning it all the way around, is firing Ezra Miller into a sun. You do those three things, you did too. DC might be saved. And I think you probably agree with me on my first two points and the third point. I think if they do the third point, because they did the other two, I think they're fine. And as to what James Gunn has to do, I think he just has to make things more adult. I think people always, and it's not always accurate, because Marvel has very dark stuff, but for what it is, people look at DC as the darker comic book storyline, universe, whatever. So I think they have to be, sorry, children, if you're listening. I think it has to not cater to kids. I think it has to be more adult universe. That's my take. And having James Gunn and the other guy flanking his name, I think that means it's going to be more adult. I'm not saying everything has to be R, but I think every project will be like 13 plus or R. I don't think there'll be like any PG or G, like G stuff. You know, I think it's going to be because James have... Gunn and like not that even Matt Reeves' Batman isn't even part of the James, what James Gunn is doing yet or it, it might never be, but, like, they, that pairs well together because their directing styles are kind of similar, like, they're darker. Guns is a little more humor-filled, uh, but, like, it, it meshes. So I think that also brings it in, you know, like... Yeah, me. 100%. Um, I have four hopes slash predictions slash wants for projects from James Gunn's DC creativity side. Um, I didn't get to that. I was just going on a broad scale of it. But yeah, go ahead. I want him to release Batgirl. Like like a Schneider cut? Like, I want him to get that file and put it out. Okay. Get it out there for the people. I think that movie deserves to be seen. It, it's crazy the way that it unfolded. Um, and I think if there's anybody that can pull that off, it's James Gunn. Um not named Kevin Feige, obviously. Um, the next thing, I was talking with a co-worker about this. How cool would it be to get either a reboot or a uh, new era of Batman Beyond the Animated Series? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I think that would be pretty sweet. Um, you know, we've got the animated Harley Quinn series on HBO Max. I think you could do something with Batman Beyond, whether it's a Aren't reboot. Are they doing... Or... Um... Aren't they doing the other Batman? They're bringing it back, right? I Batman think so. Show? Yeah. So Batman Beyond would be super nostalgic for like our era of, you know, human. Uh, that was Saturday morning cartoons. That'd be super fun. It goes hard, bro. Um, the next thing I really want to see is I'm trying to remember. I just had it. Um, oh, here's this is the big one because it is James Gunn. There is that bridge that is now handshaking and we've seen somebody you just brought up superman mentioned in the mcu i want to see the marvel dc crossover event from the comics happen one way or another somehow some way and i think now that there is a liaison from coming from marvel in james gunn now in charge of dc I think there's an opportunity that that could happen, and we've heard Superman get name dropped in the Eternals. That's true, and it only helps now that they got Henry Cavell back in DC, and there was rumors of him being in Marvel, so that would further do the bridge. Um, 
No, that's a great point. I think the only actual creative aspect that I would want, like project, I was thinking of it because of the fucking first one was so terrible. Actually establish like a good Green Lantern. Like, that's well, there is a Green Lantern project is coming. And that makes me scared. So good. Well, that's it's actually-, actually pretty solid. They are reworking it to be focused around just one lantern instead of multiple lanterns. I think it's a, a good they're, direction. They're doing John that they're going. Stewart, right? Not Hal Jordan? Yes. Nice. So I think it's I think it's in the right trajectory now with that. Um, We'd love to see that. The other thing I want to see is more spinoff shows like we got with Peacemaker around Suicide Squad characters. Yeah, Suicide Squad and just like I'm fine with taking risk of like like Peacemaker, like the obscure hero or anti-hero villains, and making a show about that because like to have the the people we did in that show you wouldn't like you wouldn't expect it to be so successful and play, it played off very well like you can do that like matt reese is trying to do that in his universe with some directors with the arkham asylum show and etc but like there's just so much like even you could even look at the flash he has a couple cool villains batman obviously does etc like yeah you know i mean there's so many aspects that you could pull to make an interesting show or shows yeah, so I think DC, for the most part, you know, four-year exclusive rights deal uh, with James Gunn being there, I think that's huge, and um, it's only going to propel forward, and hopefully we get more information about projects and such uh, coming down the pipeline very soon. But Dylan, that brings us to everybody's favorite segment. It is the streaming platform, Multiverse News and Notes, brought to you by our homies over at Pickup. You guys can go to playpickup.com, start playing the hottest headlines in sports, rack up points on your fan profiles, cash them in for prizes on the Pickup Marketplace. That's playpickup.com. Dylan, I forget if we talked about this last week or not, uh, but Disney CEO Bob Chappick does not believe animation is for adults. Quote, this comes from the Wall Street Journal. When adults put their kids to bed at night after watching an animated film, they're probably not going to tune into another animated movie. They want something for them. Bob. Buddy. Let me inform you on something. Not everybody watching Disney animation has children. (laughs) Yeah, does he not realize how many adults go to Disney World that don't have kids? Right. I, I, I get what he's trying to say. Yeah, I think people are taking that the wrong way. Like, I don't think he's trying to, like, sit here and shame you. Like, ah! I think he's just kind of... It sound, To me, anyway, you know, it sounds like he's just kind of speaking on his own belief, which isn't always great when you're wrong. Yeah. But he's definitely wrong in terms of, like... He's, he's not wrong. Like, you're right. After I have to watch a kid's movie with my, my little cousins or whatever, you're right. I do want to watch something for me. It might be an adult, like a DC esque like vibe of a cartoon that I put on. Guess or what? I might put on Star Wars Clone Wars, or I might put Still on you know animation. something. Yeah. Uh, this one's very funny. Olivia Cook, obviously, who played the older Allison Hightower in House of the Dragon. Ah, my uh, queen. <laughs> on her favorite deleted scene from House of the Dragon season one, in the dinner scene in episode eight, uh, she says she snipped at Sir Kristen Cole quite callously, like quote. You've been dismissed. He stutters, and I'm just like, you can go now. And then he walks away. I love doing that. Uh, Here's the one good thing about Team Green, I'll tell you that. (laughs) And then she goes on to say, uh, on if there were any deleted scenes between Allison and Rhaenyra, ours were all so good that they all made it in. (laughs) I love that. Uh, Like I mentioned earlier, we got our first clip from Wakanda Forever. Um, We'll tweet that out for people. Uh, to let them know. This one's very interesting. We brought up John Favreau at the top of the show. He says Ahsoka is a samurai adventure series, Dylan. Uh, Dave Filoni says Ahsoka, uh, his Ahsoka episode in The Mandalorian Season 2 was uh, inspired by Yojimbo from 1961. I do like me some samurai movies. I also like me westerns, and those two things 
correlate, oddly enough. So color me intrigued, my guy. Uh, the next thing on the docket that we did mention earlier to a vision series titled vision quest is reportedly in development at Marvel studios. A writer's room is being assembled, I believe this week. Uh, and it has been since confirmed that Elizabeth Olsen will reprise her role as the Scarlet witch in that show. Mm, I like that. I was going <laughs> to, <Yeah. laughs> Uh, some other news here for one of my favorite characters, Kelly Marcel will direct Venom 3 that comes via Deadline. Uh, she previously wrote the first two films in the franchise and is co-writing Venom 3 with Tom Hardy. That makes me happy. I think she's done a fantastic job, um, doing that, so that's great. All my friends love to see it. Um, the next thing on the docket here... Uh, oh, also, Vision Quest will follow Vision trying to regain his memory and humanity. Okay. Okay. Um, the next thing here. Here we go. George R. R. Martin confirms House Stark and Winterfell will appear in House of the Dragon Season 2. Possibly the Riverlands. Possibly? That is his, uh, his quote there. Okay. Uh, like you mentioned, Dylan, Liam Hems Hemsworth will officially replace Henry Cavill, uh, as Geralt of Rivia in The Witcher Season 4, and based on a poll put out by Culture Crave, uh, asking people, will you watch The Witcher Season 4 without Henry Cavill, uh, 82% of people in a poll, Dylan, that received 201,531 votes, 82% of people said no. Yeah, they <laughs> whoever whoever's in charge of that show is shitting themselves, dude. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh no, they're like season four is already being filmed. What do we do? Uh, via comicbook.com, Nate Moore confirms that the Eternals will return in the MCU. We have not seen the last of those characters, and on the Blade tease in Eternals, we talked about two versions of that. One where we would cut to him and one where we wouldn't. How textual yeah. do you want it to be? Well, we all know you guys can go check out the YouTube short we have out. We know why they didn't cut to him because there was trouble in paradise for a little bit. Trouble, <laughs> trouble, trouble, trouble. Did you see Kiki Palmer dressed up as rogue for Halloween, Dylan? I did not, but that's why Google is a thing. Cast her now. Cast Kiki Palmer's rogue right now. Kiki Palmer rogue. Oh wow, that's awesome looking. Okay. It looks fantastic. Need it, need it now. Um, next thing on the docket, Kristen Milotti has been cast as Sophia Falcone in the Penguin series for HBO Max. I did see that. Good for her. Wow, that's, that's a good, good, call, good to call it this. It looks just like it. And then we also got EA and Marvel will be developing at least three new games together. First will be Iron Man. Yeah, I'm excited about that, but very cautiously excited because some of the projects, you know, like the video game, we, we, we've had this conversation multiple times. Movie like entities that become video games are either like, eh, or eh. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, this comes from Phase Zero CB, I believe, comic book on Twitter. Um, yeah, comicbook.com's Marvel podcast. Wakanda Forever producer Nate Moore says Doctor Doom was never going to appear in the film. While director Ryan Coogler is a fan of Doctor Doom, once we decided Namor was going to be the antagonist, that was always going to be the focus. That's fine by me. I'm okay with it. Um... George R. R. Martin wanted to start House of the Dragon 40 years earlier than it did. It would start with an episode around Jaehaerys' two sons, Aemon and Balon, and we see the friendship, but also the rivalry between the two sides of the Great House. You would have if, you would have had even more time jumps, even more recastings. I was the only one who was really enthused about that. Friendship um, never ends. Totally happy the way that they went about it. Um, oh. Next up here according to puck news uh the delay of the next star wars movie is reportedly due to quote fear and indecision at lucasfilm the new mantra at lucasfilm is quote getting it right 
Well, that's that's good to get it right. I mean, right? Like we want a movie. <laughs> we don't want the movie to just be released with no like like the other Star Wars that came out. Hundred <clears throat> percent. Uh, next up here we have our Wonder Man, Dylan, for the MCU. For it. Uh, Yahya Abdul Mateen. Apologies if I said that incorrectly. Will play Wonder Man in the upcoming MCU series, according to Deadline. He is best known uh, for portraying Black Manta in the DC Extended Universe, uh, Aquaman films, and Bobby Seal in the Netflix historical legal drama The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Uh, New Orleans actor. He's aged 36. Um, I think this is perfect casting. I think he's going to be great as Wonder Man, and I'm excited for that show. I'm looking also, at, oh, yeah, directed by Destin cool, Daniel Craig. Uh, that's a good Craig. casting. I like that. I'm looking at his IMDb right now. Um, so I like that casting a lot. Uh, Dylan, the, the famous and ever-growing A24 uh, studio, they're developing a Friday the 13th prequel called Crystal Lake. It's a series. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this, because I feel like this is an entity that's been done a lot, but if they do it right, it could also be good. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, then we got a premiere date for our boy Pedro Pascal and his new project, HBO's The Last of Us. Did someone say Pedro Pascal? Woo-hoo. It's premiering January 15th on HBO. I love that, man. Um, we also have uh, Lupita Nyong'o, who's one of my favorite actresses. Uh, she will star in A Quiet Place Day 1. The spinoff film releases March 8th, 2024. I could because I'm hungry, but I literally heard pizza. <laughs> I said Lupita. I know, I know. I just, but my brain was like, ooh, that sounds good. Uh, House of the Dragon finale director Greg Yaitanis, uh says the dragon fight that we saw at the end there, Dylan, it was inspired by How to Train Your Dragon. I saw the breakdown of the two scenes, like, compared. Um, also, the one scene, they took, they took a Shrek. Off. I think I sent you that, the TikTok on that. Yeah. Uh, ready to feel old, Dylan. No, but yes. Monsters, Inc. was released 21 years ago this week. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Kyle, you don't do that to another man. Jesus. Lord. Uh, gotta love it. Uh, yeah, and following up on The Last of Us, season one is nine episodes, and it will premiere January 15th on HBO. No, I don't love it. <laughs> I don't, I don't love it. This one that we said we would talk about the Russo brothers here. They say the Disney live action Hercules film is a modern musical inspired by TikTok. What? Quote, audiences have been trained by TikTok, right? What is their expectation of what that musical looks like and feels like? That can be a lot of fun and help us push the boundaries a little bit on how you execute a modern musical. Sir, what the fuck is going on? I said we were doing so well. <laughs> I'm so yeah. excited for that movie. And now I'm like, oh, no. Uh, yeah, now it's a, uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard pass for me, dog. <laughs> so hopefully we get a, a little more clarification there. And last bit here, The Sandman on Netflix has been renewed for season two. I still need to watch that. I was told from many that it is delectable. And uh, Dylan, I have watched all of season six of Big Mouth. Fantastic, fantastic horniness. <laughs> no, that's a good way to end the show. That's episode one hundred, everybody. Uh, fantastic horniness. <laughs> Be sure to let us know what. You Leave want. it in the comment section. Hashtag fantastic horniness. Um, yeah, make sure you guys. Make sure you guys are following us on the socials at streamer S Z N on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, follow Dylan on Twitter at Dylan Mazzola. Oof. Follow me at K B I Z Z L three one one. Pick me a gas. <laughs> Subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple Podcast, Spotify. Leave those five star ratings and reviews on Apple and Spotify. And as Dylan always says, let us know what to watch and what to listen to, people. Hello. Need it need it uh and of course subscribe to the underground sports philadelphia youtube channel where you get full video episodes of streamer season and all of your favorite underground sports philadelphia shows 
Uh, subscribe, smash the like button, ring the bell icon, comment down below with your recommendations, your thoughts on everything we talked about on this episode, and anything else that comes to mind. Uh, big thank you to our sponsors. All of their info is linked in the show notes on audio and in the description on YouTube. But Dylan, here's to 100 more. This has been episode 100 of Streamer Season, the exclusive streaming platform TV and movie podcast on the Underground Sports Philadelphia Podcast Network. For Dylan, I'm KB, and your fellow Cowabunga boys are going to go watch their fight in Phil's in the World Series and uh, blast off to a galaxy far, far away. So until next time, we are getting the heck out of here. See ya!